I have a Minolta MC Telerocker PF 135mm F2.8 here that I'm going to be fully disassembling. I've taken apart another another 135mm F2.8 Minolta, um, but this one that I'm going to be disassembling today is the earlier version. It's the MC uh, version 1, whereas this one over here, uh, it's the one I've disassembled before, is the MC2 version. Um, so, in the way you can tell these apart easily is that this one has a built-in lens hood, whereas this one does not. And you can notice a few cosmetic differences on the outside as well, like the silver ring at the bottom and just the designs and patterns and indicators on the two are different. And then the uh, aperture control ring on this one is up on the top of the lens, whereas on this one it's more down towards the bottom. So we're going to be fully disassembling this lens and getting access to the diaphragm, all the mechanical sections inside. Uh, this one is a little bit more difficult to take apart, so it's probably not the, uh, the best one to start with if you're trying to repair a lens. Um, there are a lot of little pieces that are easy to lose and things don't lock together easily. It's laid out more similarly to the 200 millimeter rockers, which also use this more complex design. But because the lens is smaller, it doesn't really make a lot of sense all the time, which is probably why they changed over to the other design uh, for the later MC2 version. To start off with, we'll get access to the front of the diaphragm and remove the front optics. So going in from the front, I've just set the lens hood aside. On this front section here, you can notice there's three little slotted screws going around on this top section. And this lens also does use slotted screws exclusively, like a lot of the earlier Minolta lenses. So I'll undo these three screws. This entire piece just slides right off. So now we have access, you can see the front optic here and then the main lens barrel there. So just grab the front optic black section and unscrew that. So you can remove the entire rather large front optic piece there. And I believe that you can further disassemble this. There are little divots on it for a spanning wrench where you can actually remove the individual elements if there's fungus inside. But this allows you to clean the back and front surfaces which may have grime or marks on them um, and clean any dust off of that. And now we do have access to the front of the aperture blades. So it's pretty easy to get access to the front of the aperture blades uh, relatively quickly. Um, for the now going in for the back of the lens to get access to the back of the aperture blades, this is where things start to get a little more difficult. Um, because if you're not careful, it's easy to lose some of the parts as we start taking this apart. So we'll start off by removing the mounting plate, which is this section back here with the mount itself and then um, this plate behind it as well. So it has four little silver screws going around here. Undo all those. And you want to be careful when removing these pieces in here. Uh, the mounting plate, this one's not too dangerous, but just has the stop down lever control on it. But some of these other pieces, there are loose in this section in here where you have the section that turns around independently that's indicating the where the uh, aperture is currently set, this little section here. Underneath this are a, a set of ball bearings and little steel uh, pipe separator things. So you want to be careful. I can kind of lift this up just to show. But right down here, it's a set of five or six little ball bearings and then little separator things as well in here that are all completely loose. And there's nothing to hold this in place. So you want to be careful not to lose any of those as you're working on this lens. And you can't actually remove this piece right now. So I'm just going to set that back down there for a moment. So what we want to do at this stage is remove that section with the little ball bearings in it. Um, but first I'm going to remove these two little separator washers that are sitting there. The section below has these little slotted screws. It might be easier actually if I do remove the ball bearings and the little separator. So I'm just going to take all of these, just being careful not to lose any. Set those all aside. All right, now that we don't have to worry about those, you can see as I move this piece around, it's held in place on this side over here by a little post. So you can't actually remove this at this stage because this post is looping over the section down there. And there's no way to work this out without further disassembling the lens. To do that, we're going to remove this black tube in here. 
So there's this, the optics, and then there's a black tube going around the top of it, which has two little divots for a spanning wrench. Um, and it seems like it's already loosened up here, but you can go in with a spanning wrench and just loosen this thing up and then undo it by hand. And this is necessary to actually remove that other piece. It's holding it in, in place or, or actually preventing you from uh, removing it fully. All right, so you're gonna just remove this tube, which is going over the lens elements in the back section there. And now what this allows us to do is, let me lift this up again. Over on this side, now we can push in the little bar here where we couldn't before and actually pop this entire, so I'm gonna push in on this side and then pop that section off, so to remove that fully. And now looking down at where the ball bearings used to be and that piece was resting, we can see that there are four little slotted screws going around here that are holding the next section in piece, the one with the depth of field scale on it. So that next body section, so I'll remove these four screws to undo that. So now we have a little bit better access to the back element. It's still kind of far down inside the lens, even focusing all the way in, but you can remove this next body section as well, um, which is what contains the focusing mechan or the focusing ring itself. So I'm just gonna lift this up and get that out of the way and come back and disassemble a few pieces on that in a moment. And now we do have access to the back element on its own. Um, and there are two little divots for a spanning wrench on the outside. There are ones on the inside too that remove the uh, black ring that's holding in the element itself. But we want to get the ones on the outside to undo the entire uh, element. And remove that, set that aside. Now we have access to both sides of the diaphragm. So we can go in and clean this off lightly in its current state. So setting aside this diaphragm piece for a moment, looking back at this focusing mechanism and the focusing ring, we have the intersection going around here and then the focusing ring itself, which is the body section with the outer part of the focusing mechanism. So I'm going to take the intersection here and focus it outwards. So just spin this around until I can remove that. Now this gets the outer section a little bit more on its own. You can see that there are uh, little slotted screws down here that you can actually undo to remove the focusing ring itself. The one thing that um, I will mention for this is that once you undo these screws, um, it's very hard to put the lens back together um, and access these screws while it's mounted on a camera and having it being fully assembled. Uh, so it's, uh, I would recommend against, I guess, make sure that when you take this apart and undo these little screws down here, that you mark where they were initially uh, so that you can zero the lens and not have to disassemble the entire thing while you're trying to zero it. So I'll set this aside. There are uh, also two bars on the back here uh, that have the two tracks that were holding the sections in place instead of having them rotate around, but we don't need to remove those right now. Looking back at this section here, to just reveal some of the mechanical workings of the lens a little bit better, I'm gonna remove this last body ring going around here, the black, black ring, um, and it is held in place again by three little slotted screws. So undo all these. Piece just lifts right off and set that aside, and we've revealed a little bit more of how the lens is working internally and how everything is getting coupled into the aperture. This is as far as I'm going to take the disassembly of this lens. You can actually undo the aperture itself by, you can see down looking into it, um, you can undo the diaphragm by undoing this top plate here. It has little uh, screws going in that are hitting up against the side and holding it in place. And those slotted screws are right here. They're very, they're very tiny screws. I think there are three of them going around. And you can remove that top plate and then actually remove the blades and remove the back plate of the diaphragm as well and then reassemble the entire thing um, if you need to clean the blades more thoroughly.
But the, uh, let me explain the way that the diaphragm is actually working here with the mechanical pieces. Like I said, I'm not going to actually take apart the mechanical sections here, but the way it's working is that the bar right here, the large silver bar that kind of is going under everything, that's what's controlling the diaphragm directly. So there's a little post on it right over here. If I hit that, opens the diaphragm up. And there are two ways that that can happen. One is the aperture um, control ring here. So just moving that back and forth just moves the, opens and closes the aperture. And that's happening with this little post over here. There's a curve, and as we rotate this aperture control ring, the post moves along the curve and moves up and down, opening and closing the aperture. The other way is with the stop down lever, which is coming in, I believe, over here and hitting up against the other side of this curve and just opening it up. There's also this little lever right here, which I believe is to, um, in case the lens would ever get stuck or the diaphragm would get stuck at a specific position, I think it hits it back open. There's probably a, a more technical term for what it's doing, but that, that I believe is what it's actually doing there. So at this stage, the lens is fully disassembled or as fully disassembled as I'm going to be taking it. There are still some coupled together pieces here, especially this diaphragm piece, which has all the mechanical sections that are in here that you can um, service in their current state. But we have things like the optics separate from the two parts of the focusing mechanism and the focusing ring, all the different body sections here, and all the different inner, inner mechanical pieces that we have as well. So for the reassembly, uh, it's a little bit more difficult than some of the other lenses because you have to put it together in the correct order and a lot of things have to line up correctly. There are also lots of small pieces that are easy to lose. So we'll just start off by reinstalling the back optical piece here. It just screws in place. Lock it down with a spanning wrench as well. Okay, and now let's take a look at how the diaphragm is being controlled by the stop down lever. So this piece right here, I'm going to grab the inner part of the focusing mechanism. This is what's coupling the stop down lever partially to the diaphragm. So the diaphragm has this little bar over here, this post, that when you hit it from this side, it opens up the lens fully. And that's being hit by this little silver section down here, this little silver lever, which goes through the inner part of the focusing mechanism and this bar and has a little lever at the top as well, a black lever. So this piece is gonna go like this down onto the lens with the black lever at the top, silver lever at the bottom controlling the diaphragm. And then to get these lined up properly, there's one other thing, which is this silver slatted screw right here. It has to get lined up with, on the back side of this inner part of the focusing mechanism, there's a little track in this detachable metal piece. And this is a piece you can actually adjust by removing and then moving how it falls in the track. Those two have to get lined up so the screw goes into the track. So just thread these together to get started and then looking down from the top you can see where the screw is and get it positioned onto the track. And you can see now that if I hit the lever, it opens and closes the aperture. Next up we'll slip this body section here just back in place. It has a little gap over here that goes over the silver lever. We'll actually tighten that down with screws later. But now we have to get the outer part of the focusing mechanism and the focusing ring back onto the intersection of the focusing mechanism. And this is the one place where uh, things can get out of line pretty easily um, when you're putting these back together. What we want to end up with in this case is that right now the diaphragm, oh, right now the diaphragm is over at let me put these back together real quick. So the diaphragm is over fully closed, so it's at 22 or around there. We want the indicator when it's focused at infinity over here, we want that to be below the indicator of where the aperture is currently, so somewhere around here. And when you're taking apart the lens, you can make marks of where this goes um, and where this needs to line up when you're screwing these pieces back together because you can really put the uh, diaphragm in position in any location. Make sure that's flat. Um, you can put the focusing mechanism back. They can screw together in any location. 
Um, and you also have to line up these two bars when you're screwing this back together. So you have the two guide bars on this outer part of the focusing mechanism that go into these slots right here. Um, but in my case, on this lens, there's right over here, there's a little marking that says 2 through 2.5. And that actually tells us where this needs to get lined up. So I'll look over on here, find between 2 and 2.5, and find where that little silver plate was, and line those up. Okay, and once I get it started here, so I've got it threaded on, but I can't go any further because the bars on the inside are not lined up. So I'll rotate the section with the bars independently of the focusing mechanism and then thread, keep moving it back until I can get the bars actually going in. Like that. See how that came out? And that's looking pretty good. See, the infinity is over by where it needs to be in this case. And when I focus all the way in, that's where it is. So there's nothing actually holding on this whole back section at the moment. Um, so you, if you pull on the uh, focusing section, you can still detach it from the aperture. And before doing anything else, we have to install the section that is actually indicating where the aperture is in the lens. So there are two pieces to that. There's this section with the depth of field scale on it, body section. And then this interior section with the actual indicator, this little post over here. And then this long, big long bar with a slot on it. And these two to go together like this, there's a gap in the uh, depth of field scale ring that the section with the uh, post goes into so that it can move back and forth. So just for right now, this uh, bar that's actually getting coupled to the indicator goes onto the bar right here with this post. And we have to install it at this stage, um, even though it kind of gets in the way. So I'll press backwards on this post on the inside here, and then push the bar down onto it like that. I'll just pop this out for the moment so we can see what we're doing now. Okay, and now on this ring, the one with the depth of field scale, there are the four screw holes going around here. We want to make sure that the depth of field scale is actually properly aligned with where we want it to be, which in this case we're focused at infinity, so that actually looks good. And then get the four screw holes lined up going around here and install those four. Now to actually lock down the focusing uh, mechanism to the uh, diaphragm, this little bar or this black tube right here which goes on top of the back glass element is what is going to do that and prevent the two from being separated now. So I'll just get it started by hand. Okay, and then tighten it down using the two divots for a spanning wrench. So that's looking good now. And now these two sections cannot be separated. So if everything is lining up correctly now, we should be able to focus between infinity have it snap over there in the minimum focusing distance, 0.15 meters. So that looks good. And it generally looks lined up as well. We have the depth of field scale indicating where we are. And then it's at F22 now, which is about what we want. So it's below where the depth of field scale is. The F22 indicator is there as well. Now comes one of the more annoying parts of the reassembly. We have to get this, this is the indicator piece that actually is indicating on the uh, camera body where the aperture is. And we have to reinstall all the little ball bearings and spacers. So just gonna drop down, these ball bearings and spacers are gonna go around the outer edge of this piece. So just do drop down alternating spacers and ball bearings. And this is what provides the smooth motion of that. Some of the other uh, MC, Lenses use this in the mount as well, but this one's particularly annoying because you can't just remove this piece and keep the ball bearings and spacers inside of it. Whereas on like the 50 millimeter 1.4 lens that uses a similar design, you can actually just remove the entire piece that has the ball bearings in it and not have to deal with any of them. You can just keep them inside. 
So just keep going around here. Okay, now I can just set this down on top of it. And again, there's nothing locking this in place, but so be careful when moving this about. So to actually lock this down, first we'll put on the two washers, go around the outer edge there. Make sure that they're not covering up any of these screw holes. Looks good. And now finally install the mounting plate. And this is where the stop down lever actually is as well. So the stop down lever is controlling this black crescent shaped piece back here, which is moving this bar. And this bar is gonna go down into the little section here behind this lever so that when it moves up and down, it opens and closes the aperture. So I'm gonna get that bar in place first. To find out where the screws are that need to line up. So right, right there. And then reinstall the four silver screws on the back section. Okay, so now that's all lining up properly. You can return to this piece in the body section. Remember we had skipped actually installing the screws, but it should go flat against the top section here with the little gap going over that lever. Just install the three black screws going into around on the lens body. Okay, I'll put on the lens cap now. That has the entire back section of the lens reassembled. Focus in here. And now to just complete the front section reassembly, we have the other body section here that's just gonna slide in place. Actually first, let me put on the other optical piece. So just screw this in place, it's a, make it a little bit easier. All right, and now slide that body section in place. There's a little white indicator on it that should line up with the depth of field scale and where the aperture currently is. So find the screw holes that line up around here with that. Okay, so that has the entire lens reassembly complete. Just have the lens hood over here remaining which just slides in place. So overall, this lens is one of the more annoying Minolta lenses to take apart and repair. Uh, several things contribute to that, like the little ball bearings and then using slotted screws and just the overall layout. It's more similar to the 200 millimeter uh, Minolta lens rather than this other um, f3.5, 2.8. So it is a little bit more complex in its layout internally. And just because of the aperture ring being up here and how the stop down lever is getting coupled in, that's a more complex setup that there's more things that can go wrong. I found that especially the part where you're coupling together the two parts of the focusing mechanism, there's a lot of chances where things can get out of line and you'll have to mess around with things. Um, so it's very important that when you're taking this apart that you do mark where things are, are lining up so that you can have an easier time putting it back together. So while you can get access to clean the diaphragm fairly easily, if you need to make mechanical repairs or actually take the diaphragm out, and especially if you go in from the back of the lens, this is not one of the more repairable Minolta lenses. And it's much more difficult than even the one generation later f3.5 lens here, or um, 135 millimeter f2.8. And it's, both of these are much more difficult to disassemble than the 3.5 versions of the 135 millimeter Minoltas. Those are much easier to take apart.